Hey, this is the secret little bit only people on YouTube get to watch. <laughs> it's a live pop-up class on Instagram, um, and I'm waiting for people to roll in before I start. But that means that first little, first little bit before people get here, um, you know, means you get to see something secret. It's not like an important secret, but it's still a moment of time with me that only people on YouTube get to see. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm doing a pop-up class. I thought, well, I was going to make myself a little lemon balm oxymel, right? And I was like, you know what? <clears throat> I've done a fair amount of lemon balm videos on my YouTube and such, but I don't think I've ever done the lemon balm oxymel. I went and checked. Sure enough, I've not shown you how to do this. So today, in this little pop-up class, we're going to learn how to make a lemon balm oxymel. So I just went out to my little ramshackle garden here <laughs> um, and I got myself some lemon balm. I didn't do a whole lot because these are um, like second year patches and so I want her to get really big and robust before I take a lot, but it's fine. Now, the thing I need you to know, sometimes when you watch my videos, you see me making these big ass jars. <laughs> You don't have to do that, you know, whether it's a tincture or an oxymel, we can start making littler jars, uh, particularly with tinctures, they last a long time because you're taking it drops at a time, so you don't have to make a half gallon at a time. So, I'm not making a huge amount of lemon balm oxymel, and that is fine too. So, basically, what the hell is an oxymel? An oxymel is basically where we're just going to take vinegar, it's a jar of vinegar, apple cider vinegar. You can use normal vinegar, I prefer apple cider. Um, and some honey and some herbs. So people will try to make this really complicated. They'll try to sell you courses and take this course to learn how to make these herbal vinegars. I'm like, it is so easy. It is so easy. So let's, let's see how easy this is and why you don't need to pay anybody to learn this. <laughs> um, okay. So first of all, look at these weird ass scissors. My mom got me these like let me see if I can, there you go. My mom got me these herb chopping scissors and I haven't really had much of an occasion to use them because honestly, when I'm cooking, I just like throw a sprig of thyme in there. I don't do that shit where I strip it off and like meticulously chop it. I'm like, nope, in the pot you go. Like there will be sticks and bones and the things you eat at my home. <laughs> like you have to pick them out. But anyhow, um, so I'm going to take my lemon balm and I'm going to give it a little bit of a chopping. Now normally I'd say you don't need to chop this up too much, but I think these scissors literally exist to chop things like that. So I'm not going to like completely mince it here, but you can see these scissors, basically it's like one, two, three, it's like five pairs of scissors at once, right? So you can see that I'm cutting off all of that minced herb, right? I mean, it's cool for something like parsley or maybe cilantro, but I think I'm just going to give these like a little bit of a chopping. I don't want you to <clears throat> pulverize what you're working with. We don't need to do that. Um, and so now I'm just going to kind of maybe break up the rest. You can use the stems, the leaves, the whole thing. I mean, I'm not pulling up by the root, but don't think that you just have to take the leaf off. There is a lot of good herbal properties in the stems of most aromatic plants. Um, okay, so, you know, I've got it broken up a bit. But, I mean, you can see the stuff on the bottom where that herb cutter really chopped it. I mean, it's great for mincing herbs, but I want to leave some somewhat intact and just kind of had a, a varying of like chopping up, right? Okay, so here is my pro tip for making an oxymel. Before you put anything in this jar, add your honey. <laughs> and that's because if you put the other stuff in there first, like the lemon balm, and then the honey, and then try to dump the vinegar over, it creates like a protective layer and the vinegar doesn't want to sink down as easy. So there's no real specific recipe for this. I mean, you can look online and get real, you know, real, uh, I don't know, anal about it. <laughs> so I was like, what's a different word for that? I'm like, nope, that's the word for it. Um, maybe, what's that? Maybe one fourth cup honey, right? You can do less, you can do more. Um, I wouldn't suggest using anything besides honey because an oxymel is literally the honey with the herb and the vinegar. Um, so sugar or some sort of artificial sweetener would not do the same thing. And now I'm gonna shove my lemon balm into the jar. And don't worry about having to try to incorporate that honey because what happens is that 
acidic nature of the vinegar starts to break the honey down. So after a couple days, you'll just be able to shake it and it'll go right in, right? Um, this is a pint mason jar, actually. Quartz are the, I don't have one on me right now, quartz are a little bit bigger. Um, and now I'm just going to dump my raw apple cider vinegar over. You don't have to use raw if you don't want to. You can use plain old distilled vinegar if you really want to. Now, here's the part where someone's going to at me and be like, because <laughs> that happens all the time. Um, okay, some people are going to tell you that you need to put like some parchment paper or some saran wrap or something over top of this to prevent the lid from rusting. Yes, if you fill it all the way to the top. Now usually I do that to prevent a little bit of oxidation, but vinegar kind of fights oxidation, right? Like oxidation is like when you peel a banana or you take a bite of an apple and you leave it there and it starts to turn brown, that's oxidation happening. That's oxygen interacting with certain particles of the plant and it basically it's kind of like you're seeing rust form even though it's not rust. People are going to at me about that too. It's the same concept, oxygen exposure to something that's not meant to be exposed to oxygen. When you're working with a tincture, uh, the oxygenation can make your tincture turn really dark even though some plants will turn dark naturally but the vinegar really fights that so really as long as all of your plants are under the water or under the vinegar um you're not going to have to worry even if you're shaking it a little bit i'm not really worried about rusting this lid honestly it's usually taken two or three years before i notice any amount of rust forming on the outer band i almost never notice it on the inner band you know why because there's no exposed metal here you start getting a rust on the edges here and on your lid um and honestly you know it's in a couple years you won't want to be using this vinegar usually you want to use it up in about a year right so so honey chopped up lemon balm vinegar over top you can shake it if you want to look at that the acid's already making the um acid from the vinegar is already making the honey work its way into so why why do we want to make an oxy mill well oxy mills are a fantastic way to start using herbs in a food related way right you're really not going to want to do this i mean you can there are no rules people you know you can experiment like you're not going to want to use some like nasty tasting plant <laughs> right because unlike a tincture in about four weeks, you're going to strain this just through a normal strainer, take the plant matter out, save the liquid, that's your oxymel, right? You're gonna use this in like teaspoon, tablespoon amounts, right? Versus a tincture where you're taking a few drops at a time. So I like to make this um, lemon balm oxymel to make things like salad dressings. Or if you're making something like, um, oh, what's that called, like a switchel, where you're making like a vinegar-based like um, electrolyte, basically, for summer drinking. I really like it. And, of course, you can just take a tablespoon if you want to help with digestion. Now, beyond all of the fact that that's what vinegar can help us with, lemon balm is really fantastic for supporting your natural immune system functions. I like her in particular for things like the flu and that type of family, um, but you like her, I like her for nausea as well. She's pretty good for anxiousness, although I will say uh, if you're using her to help with like, you know, a little bit of anxiousness or unrest, typically I'd go towards either a tincture or a tea. Vinegar is more of a food base. You're not going to get as many as her volatile properties. Let's talk about that. Lemon balm smells like lemon, right? That means she has lots of VOCs, volatile organic compounds. That is something that we are extracting. And it can be more or less potent depending on how it's made. Now, lemon balm has the capacity, now just hold on don't freak out <laughs> lemon balm has the capacity like all mints i repeat all mints have the capacity to down regulate thyroid function with time and this terrifies people they're like oh shit you know i have low thyroid it's an epidemic especially amongst women uh we have really low thyroid function we're like really afraid of these mints and things well okay so if you're going to make this and you're going to use this on a regular basis of food you have no problem. If you're going to make a tincture and use it on occasion as needed for like nausea and anxiousness, a little bit of like insomnia, no problem. If you started taking that tincture every day, all day for like until the bottle was gone, you might start down regulating it, right? You can make teas and stuff too, but are you drinking tea on occasion? Or are you like obsessively drinking lemon balm tea two, three, four times a day, right? So it's like, it's not like she'll instantly down-regulate your thyroid, 
Right. Now, the reason that I like oxymels is because they go after more of the water-soluble properties versus the alcohol-soluble properties, and we kick that up with the honey because honey is really, really great for extracting water-soluble properties. So we're getting a little bit of like the acid-soluble properties, but because there's no alcohol in this, um, you are not getting the alcohol-soluble properties, which makes this less potent than a tincture, which is why we have to take a tablespoon or so at a time. But yeah, that was, I mean, I guess you could pay somebody to teach you that. <laughs> I mean, but you could just watch this video and you're like, all I did was put honey in the bottom, lemon balm in the jar, and poured vinegar over top. Now, you can use whatever herb you want as long as it's like a safe, edible, usable on a regular basis. Don't go putting something fucking toxic in here like hemlock or something like that. Um, but also, it, I totally read the comments went through my brain. <laughs> For those of you who are watching, I'm like, that's why I have to dead look myself in the eye because I'll get lost. Um, okay, so it's, it's vinegar. We're working on a food-based thing, and it's pretty awesome. And you know what will happen? I'll get off of here, and I'll be like, oh. That's what I was going to say, but that happened. So let me dig in here. Oh, I was going to say, you can use dried plant matter if you want. Um, now, I like fresh. Fresh is going to taste the best. If you're using dried plant matter to make an oxymel, do not fill your jar up all the way because it will expand and you'll not get any liquid back out of it. You can use maybe about, if you, this is a pint jar, if you're going to use dried plant matter, maybe use half a cup of herb max. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to remember, if I took this lemon balm and I dried it and it was broken up, like when you get dried herbs, it would maybe be barely anything, right? So you don't want to overdo it. It's not going to taste as good. Now, um, if I'm going to use this as a salad dressing or things like that, or as food, I'm going to do my best to use um, fresh plant matter versus dried because it it just it's going to taste so much better and so okay you're only going to let this sit for about four weeks all right then you are going to strain this plant matter out and you can compost it feed it to your chickens throw it away whatever you need to do you could keep it for like throwing in like soups and stews depending on the type of herb you're using if you are like making bone broth maybe because usually you add a little bit of vinegar to your bone broth to help the minerals leach out of the bones so you could maybe do that um just depends on the herb that you're using but you know, mainly you're after that infused vinegar now if if you are using raw vinegar which i always use raw apple cider vinegar because it has a lot more gut healing properties and good probiotics and things like that it is possible that you might start growing uh, a mother on the top of this when it's done and that's just because the um the sugar has given the basically the culture that's in this something to eat again don't freak out Take the little Scooby thing off. It'll look just like you're making kombucha, right? And then what's cool is if you went and got a bunch of apples or something and like added some water and a bunch of apple cores, you could throw that mother in there and make yourself some homemade vinegar. It's really easy to make. Um, but yeah, this is, um, this is really easy. So another important step, <coughs> right what it is. <laughs> and now people are like, I won't forget. It's so condescending of you to think that I would possibly forget what I've made. <laughs> So you could get really into this, right? You could get really into this. You could start making a ton of stuff, trying to keep it from memory. You could also uh, forget about it. <laughs> and two years later, you're like, the fuck is this thing, right? So write down what it is. So I'm going to write lemon balm oxymil, if I can spell. Nope. I have dysgraphia. <laughs> I just merged together the word lemon and balm and spelt it like L-E-B-A-L-M, because that's what, <laughs> so, okay, so, lemon, balm, oxymel, and I think today's the fifth, we'll go with that, no, today's like, what's the date, fourth, I think so, hey, Kent, what's the date, fourth, that was right, husband's in the other room, okay, so, uh, June is six, four, twenty-three, okay, so, I wrote the name on it, the date on it and all that stuff. I usually have um, those fancy labels you watch me fill out with all the batch number and information on it. Um, they're down in the apothecary and it's like, if you can't tell, I've got a fan on. It's like 100 degrees out today. 
and I don't feel like walking down there. So I'm just going to write this on there. I want to put this in a cool, dark place for four weeks. That's it. And then I'm going to strain it and use it as is. Again, you can use this as a salad dressing add-in. You can use this as like some sort of like summer drink that you're making that requires vinegar. You can use it when you're cooking too. Now, I will say like if you're using like vinegar, uh, like, like with my pancakes, I use a vinegar and baking soda reaction to make them really fluffy, right? Because science is cool. Um, but if I added this to that, I wouldn't really taste the lemon balm, right? But it's kind of cool because that's a way that you can start cooking with these herbs um, and not necessarily know that you are, but just start moving them into your daily life like that. Um, but yeah, that's how you make a lemon balm tincture. And the most, oh, the most important thing that I forgot to tell you about this, and this one is like, it's really critical to understand. Um, you aren't absolutely smart enough to do this. <laughs> that was so easy, and I don't care what you've been made to believe, you are smart enough to do this on your own. You don't need to pay somebody hundreds of dollars to teach you how to do this. You just need to be curious, trust yourself, and try. Failing is the best teacher. And by the way, if you don't try, you've already failed. <laughs> so just try, just get curious. Allow yourself the grace to be like, I'm gonna try, and if I fuck it up, that's okay, because I'll try again, and eventually I'll figure it out, because you are definitely smart enough to do this. Um, if you like these pop-up classes, if you like my YouTube videos, if you like my Instagram, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. If you're watching this on Instagram, definitely come check me out on YouTube. There will be a lot of videos there that I can't upload here or I can't do as a live pop-up class because uh, Instagram no longer allows um, long format videos unless I do a live and some stuff is out in the woods where I don't have an internet connection and I can't just like transport to my kitchen to do a video so make sure you're following me on YouTube as well um, if you are sharing this it helps other people learn that they are smart enough too if you want to support my existence or find anything that I've used in my videos consider um, following the links in my bio or in the description to go to the shop that I make things in <laughs> obviously as a professional um, but also I made one of those little things where you can go see the things I use like a Amazon type shop thing um, for you know like these weird herb scissors and things that I've used in other videos um, but again the most important thing out of all of this even if you don't make this is for you to understand that you are smart enough to do this so Thank you so much for joining me in my little pop-up class, and I'll see you next time. Bye.